I'm Shazad Charania. I work at the Attorney General's office in London, and that's the city uh, from which I'm speaking to you today. One of the most significant moments for me in international criminal justice over the past year uh, was an event that took place just a few weeks ago, and that was the arrest, surrender and transfer to the custody of the ICC on the 9th of June of Ali Muhammad Ali Abdul Rahman. And he stands accused of more than 50 counts of war crimes and crimes against humanity uh, committed on behalf of Sudanese government forces in Darfur, including murder, rape and torture. And he's entitled to uh, the presumption of innocence and will face a uh, fair trial at the uh, International Criminal Court. But hearing of the arrest uh, took me back to my time in The Hague as the legal advisor to the British Embassy. And I was present in the courtroom in 2013 for the first appearance of Bosco Ntaganda, following his surrender to the US Embassy in Rwanda. And he went on to face trial for crimes against humanity and war crimes uh, committed in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And he was sentenced to 30 years imprisonment. And I was also present in 2015 for the first appearance of Dominic Ongwen following his capture in the Central African Republic. He stood trial for war crimes and crimes against humanity too, uh, committed on behalf of the Lord's Resistance Army in Northern Uganda. And we await a verdict in that case, uh, which I think is due imminently. I was also present in 2016 to see the International Court for the former Yugoslavia sentence Radovan Karadzic to 40 years imprisonment, convicted of war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide. And I remember that they all stood there, uh, defiant, but also uh, somewhat diminished figures, uh, passively having to await the fate that international criminal justice was about to hand down to them. And none of them showed very much emotion when the charges were read out, or in the case of Karadzic when he was found guilty. Uh, but what all this reinforces to me is the idea of the long arm of international justice. Ali Muhammad Ali Abdul Rahman was a fugitive for 13 years, Karadzic for 15 years, Ongwen 10 years, Entaganda for 7 years. And in the Entaganda and Ongwen cases, despite the length of time that uh, it took from the issuing of the arrest warrants uh, and their transfer to face justice, at the ICC, over 6,000 victims participated in the proceedings when they eventually took place. And when we think of the horrific crimes being committed today, for example, in Syria and Iraq, where no international court has jurisdiction, we shouldn't give up hope that there will be justice handed down one day. And that's why the work of bodies such as the International Impartial and Independent Mechanism, the IIIM, the investigative team to promote accountability for crimes committed by Daesh, and the Commission for International Justice and Accountability in collecting and preserving evidence of atrocity crimes is so critical. The coming year will be one of the most significant for the International Criminal Court. And that's because a new prosecutor is going to be elected in December, along with six new judges. And we'll also see elected a new president of the Assembly of States Parties. And then next March, the judges will elect a new president of the court. But before any of those events, the Independent Expert Review will report back with its recommendations, which will require both the court and states parties to work together to focus on performance, efficiency and effectiveness. So as the court moves ever closer to its 20th anniversary, facing as much hostility and as many challenges as at any point in its history, it's critical that the court and its governing body, the state's parties, face them together, recalling the spirit of Rome 
and the reasons why the court was established in the very first place. The events of a few weeks ago, when Ali Muhammad Abdul Rahman stood up in the courtroom and the charges were read out, provided a sobering reminder of what is at stake. 